If I had three words to describe this hobby, they would be confusing, frustrating, and absolutely breathtaking. I can't really help you with the word two. Word one is the thing everyone tries to achieve in their own way. But I think I know enough to lift some of the confusion. So let's talk about plate solving. Just one quick note before we start. I'm doing deep sky astrophotography for not even a year. I'm not a professional and everything here is my own perspective and equipment. For everyone with other equipment, with different equipment, this video can only be the base of what can be achieved. It's supposed to be a good starting point. If you have any questions, I give my best to answer them, but I do not have all the answers. So let's get started. In this video I will talk about what plate solving actually is, what programs to use to execute the maneuver, the software and the scope setup, step-by-step -step alignment and the automatic slowing. All of these five steps I think the most basic and easiest things to do, but they can be very confusing they were to me and so I try to help you not to get some of the confusion lifted off of you. Plate solving is an image analysis method. You take an image of the sky through your scope with your camera and then you give it to the software. The software takes the stars in the image and tries to calculate where in the sky this image was taken. The data calculated in this process is very helpful for astronomy if you want to find small targets for example. The data is given to you with the center of the image to the array and deck coordinates and can be used in very different ways to make your astrophotography life easier. When it comes to software you want to use for plate solving. I know most of you guys are using APT, the astrophotography tool. There's no integrated plate solver in the software, but since plate solving is a very helpful tool to get your imaging easier, APT has included two ways of software plate solving. There are two different programs, one called All Sky Plate Solver ASPS and Plate Solve 2 PS2. With my experience I've only tried out All Sky Plate Solver, so I will talk about this program here. If you want some information about Plate Solve 2, I'm pretty sure there's enough information online. All Sky Plate Solver is a free software you can download online on their website. After the installation, you go to the settings menu and set the focal length of your telescope and the pixel size of your camera sense. Once this is done, you go to the index installation wizard, enter the specs for your camera, in my case 6000 by 4000 pixels, and the indexes you need to download are highlighted. You need to download them in order to get the software working properly. After this, you can choose a JPEG astro image from your hard drive. In my case, I was capturing the Cocoon Nebula. I open the image and click Plate Solve. Now the software is trying to calculate what image I have taken there. So this work can take up almost one minute and mi a minimum I think of 20 seconds. This is called blind solving since the software doesn't actually know where it was taken. In my case, it only took 19.4 seconds to solve. You can click on Browse Solved Image and the information over here is given already. After you zoomed out, you can see the solved image with the coordinate grid. You can toggle the deep sky shapes and the object names and you know exactly what you have in your image. You can play with the histogram and stretch the image as you want. This won't do anything to your final image. So once you have this information, you can do much more in APT. Once you have started APT, you can connect your camera and, most important, you need to connect your telescope mount. Over here we have the gear tab. We won't need the Autostar focus setter to have any of these. The important part, connect scope and the point craft option. As you can see here the entire description, I will do a quick rundown. Point craft is the integrated plate solving in APT. Not really included, but you can connect this one with All Sky Plate Solver. So in the settings menu down here, you can 
choose your path where you have installed all sky plate silver and also plate solve 2. I have tried it out and didn't work yet for me, so I went with all sky plate solver. These settings down here, you can change them as you want, I won't go over all, the, all of them. Since I'm using ASPS, I will use the blind solve method every time and click OK. Now the important part. Since I'm not recording this at night, I'm recording this at daytime, you can see in the bottom right, I will load an image I have taken earlier. So let me go to my Dropbox and there I choose the Astro Framing tab. Let's go for the image of Andromeda Galaxy I took some nights ago. So this is the original sub I took. And now with Pointcraft open, I can click on Blind Solve. Now you can see the solving is running. All Sky Plate Solver doesn't have to be open for, th for this, which I find very convenient. Now you see the plate solving was successful. You are given the approximate coordinates of the, your image center, the resolution and the angle of your camera in your scope. Over here, this arrow here points to the North Celestial Pole. Now you have your first successful plate solve in APT. Now to the second most important part, I think. You need to connect your telescope to APT. I and this next part, I have a Skywatcher ATQ5. Through the ASCOM platform, most telescopes will be able to connect to your Windows PC. I don't know how it works with other operating systems, I'm sorry. The thing that I do, the hand controller of the Skywatcher ATQ5, it has two ports. The first one to the mount, of course, the black cable. And the mount came with another cable, a serial cable, which can be plugged into the hand controller as well. Now I purchased in a local store a USB to serial adapter. So now I can connect the hand controller to the USB port of my PC. Once you have your telescope mount polar aligned, and it is very important to polar align it good. Plate solving does not include polar alignment. You need to be polar aligned first. I turn the scope on. I do the polar alignment and the initial setup, but I don't do the three star alignment yet. Now with the hand controller being in the main setup tab, the next thing we need on our PC is the software and the drivers to get everything running. What you need. For my Skywatcher HQ5 on the main website, there are two sets of drivers that need to be downloaded in order to connect it to ASCOM. The links to those two drivers from Skywatcher, I will include them in the description of the video, of course. The next thing, you need to download ASCOM. ASCOM is a driver set made for astronomy. Those guys over there who made this, very awesome people. They did everything for free and their goal is to achieve to connect every type of scope, whether it be a Skywatcher mount or an iOptra mount, to a Windows PC. That's the description I read on their homepage. So the next link you will see in the description, the ASCOM Platform 6. Once you've downloaded and installed that, you are good to go. All three drivers are installed. And now I can click over here on Connect Scope. The ASCOM Telescope Chooser will pop up. I can now choose in the drop down menu, the Skywatcher Telescope. I will go on Properties. The scope must already be connected for the COM port to recognize. The things here, you need to set all of those. And if you have already set up the hand controller, the coordinates are already in there. The slow settle time, I bump it down to 5 seconds because my Skywatch amount is pretty new and it doesn't need much settle time. I hit OK and you can see disconnect scope. Now this scope is connected. Very nice. And now with your telescope connected, you have the possibility in APT to move the mount. You can choose over here the guide program, the coordinates in either in JNOW or J2, the go to functions, the entire object list included in APT, the option to enable tracking and stop tracking from remount, syncing the coordinates and park amount to the home position or a saved position you have entered yourself. We have already solved an image earlier. Usually, before I new plate solving, my setup 
in the night was build up the mount and then without connection to a PC do the three star alignment. You go to three different stars, center them in the image and as you press OK the mount syncs up for itself this information to go to each object very smooth and very clear. But now we can take an image of the sky and the software knows what it is because of plate solving. And we can synchronize this information and we have with one image a one star alignment. Now you might think a one star alignment is not very precise. That is true, but what I do now since I know plate solving, I set up the mount and with the hand controller without tracking, I go to a random area in the sky. As soon as I'm there, I enable tracking so that the stars won't trail and I take the first image. The usual exposure for plate solving is 20 seconds for me. As soon as the image is taken and the image is solved, we can click sync. So now the first star alignment is done without even looking at an alignment star. You have the possibility to store this information and to show it in your connected planetarium. I usually choose Stellarium, it looks very cool. And now in this night you wanna you want to go to your object. So we did a one star alignment. You can choose out of the object list any any objects in uh, in APT here, or you can before this setup enter a custom object with the coordinates from Stellarium. You can choose an object, for example, I click on the Whirlpool Galaxy. The coordinates are shown here. And then you could either click on go to and the mount will use the information of the one star alignment and go to the Whirlpool Galaxy. Now with the one star alignment, it won't be on the Whirlpool Galaxy. It's not precise enough yet. But the telescope knows where it's pointing at because of plate solving. We can enable the aim option. If you enable aim, the telescope will slew to the position it thinks at Messier 51 will be. It takes an image. It sees, oh, I'm not on the object I want to go to. It syncs up this information and we have a two-star alignment. This process can be done multiple times. And it won't stop until the object is exactly in the center of your frame. So again, back to the options here. Go to attempts, how many times it will try to take an image and go to the object. The acceptable error, let's go to this image here. You can see the center of the image is right here. And the error are 50 pixels in a circle around here. If the object is centered in there, it will, it will be considered a successful framing. You can set the exposure that the camera will take and you are good to go. So, go to an area in the sky choose track, blind solve and synchronize and aim plus go to. This is the star alignment and the automatic slowing using blind solve and all sky plate solver. So this is my tutorial on plate solving with the Skywatcher mount. If I forgot anything or something is still not very clear, feel free to leave a comment. I will try to get to every single one of you. Use these things I just told you and create more and more beautiful astro photography in deep sky images. So with that note, clear nights, clear skies.